Thank you very much, Eligio, for uh, the very nice presentation. So you can hear me well? Uh, yes, yes. This is okay, okay, thank you. So, um, yes, as Eligio said, uh, these lectures are about uh, uh, sterile neutrinos. And uh, um, I prepared uh, just the first slide with the plane of the lectures and uh, also planes of the tutorials. Uh, so I divided uh, these lectures in, into three parts. One uh, that will take uh, more or less uh, uh, the, first, uh, the first two lectures. Uh, it's about axis active sterile neutrino oscillations. So here I will consider uh, the effects of uh, light sterile neutrinos, which can uh, uh, give oscillations that can be observed in uh, different experiments. And then uh, in the part two, uh, I will discuss uh, uh, what is the effect of uh, light uh, active and uh, sterile neutrinos in cosmology. And this will take more or less one lecture. And the last two lectures will be about uh, the theory of Dirac and Majorana neutrino masses and mixing, which uh, will uh, uh, explain how, why, uh, how the neutrino masses and mixing are generated and how this is connected with the possible existence of sterile neutrinos. And um, there are also two tutorials that will be done by Stefano Gariazzo. And uh, the first tutorial will be about short baseline reactor neutrino oscillations. And the second one about uh, uh, some sterile neutrinos in cosmology. And this will be tutorials about uh, some um, numerical calculations using some um, code uh, and um, I don't know if you already received some um, uh, instruction how to install this uh, there's some software that will allow these uh, calculations and uh, in any case uh, uh, there is an um, instruction about that and uh, um, at the end of the lectures lecture tomorrow Stefano will uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, just explain briefly what what you will need to do to be prepared to, to do this uh, calculation during the tutorials. So uh, since uh, uh, these lectures are on neutrino uh, physics and um, probably many of you are not expert in neutrino physics and uh, um, uh, last week you had a different type of lectures on the other topics so I will uh, uh, discuss first uh, uh, the physics, uh, basic physics of uh, neutrino oscillations and what is uh, the so-called um, free neutrino mixing framework. And then we will uh, introduce, I will introduce uh, the effect of the sterile neutrinos. So to start, uh, I would like just to remind you about the uh, uh, main motivation of why in general neutrino physics is uh, of great interest. And uh, uh, the main motivations are listed here in this slide. So in this slide, <coughs> uh, you can see that uh, uh, the first item is uh, that uh, neutrinos are uh, special among the known particles that are uh, uh, here I, uh, um, I think about the fermions. So uh, the uh, neutrinos are the only neutral fermions and uh, they interact very weakly, so only with uh, left-handed weak interactions, and of course gravitational interaction, but this is on large scale. When we detect neutrinos, we use uh, uh, weak interactions. And their mass is extremely small, much smaller than the other uh, fermions uh, that we know. And uh, so um, in the standard model, the neutrinos are assumed to be special, so they are assumed to be uh, left-handed and uh, massless. So this gives them a, a special role. And, uh, um, but we know that uh, from the observ observation of neutrino oscillations that I will um, discuss uh, uh, briefly in the following slides, that the uh, neutrinos are massive, but they have these masses which are very small. And uh, these masses, as I will explain in the third part of the lectures, uh, is uh, connected with uh, the physics beyond the standard model. So, for, so far, uh, since we are uh, certain that the neutrino oscillates and then passes, this is the only 
certain phenomenon uh, of physics beyond the standard model. And then uh, uh, neutrinos can also have uh, some uh, uh, non-standard interactions which are allowed to them because they are uh, neutral and uh, um, also they can have non-standard properties and uh, uh, in particular, they can have uh, the, the existence, it's possible to, uh, to, to have the existence of additional uh, neutrinos, which are called sterile, that I will explore, uh, explain in, in these lectures. Uh, one must also notice that uh, neutrinos are powerful astrophysical messages, but I will not uh, discuss this uh, uh, in these lectures. So why sterile neutrinos? Now, uh, sterile neutrinos, uh, first uh, let us uh, um, uh, be clear what we mean by sterile neutrinos. So sterile neutrinos are uh, neutral fermions, which are uh, beyond the standard model and uh, do not have weak interactions. So uh, uh, they mix with the normal neutrinos. So these are particles, neutral particles, neutral fermions that mix with the normal neutrinos. Uh, but uh, instead of um, interacting uh, through weak interaction as the normal neutrinos, which are called active, they are sterile, so they do not have uh, weak interactions. Uh, so in practice, uh, in practice uh, we cannot see them because uh, they participate only to the gravitational interactions. So they have an effect only on very large scales, and this will be the topic of the lecture on neutrino, sterile neutrinos uh, in, in cosmology. Uh, the uh, existence of sterile neutrinos is uh, motivated by, uh, as, as I will explain in part three, by the generation of uh, neutrino masses. So uh, when we want to generate the neutrino masses, we, we need to introduce uh, so-called right-handed neutrino fields, which are uh, sterile. So this way I will explain in, in part three. And uh, uh, also, um, Sterile neutrinos are uh, uh, in, in uh, so it is possible that uh, there are very uh, heavy sterile neutrinos which uh, can uh, um, generate the so called CISO uh, mechanism and uh, they, they, uh, they, they can explain why the neutrino masses are, uh, are so small. And this also I will explain on part three. Unfortunately, these uh, neutrinos are very heavy and uh, um, they don't participate in the low energy phenomenology. Uh, and uh, uh, these are not uh, the neutrinos about which I will talk today. So today I will consider uh, lighter, like sterile neutrinos, which we can, uh, that, uh, and was a, uh, that give some effect in the, um, in the, in the uh, neutrino oscillations. These heavy uh, right-handed sterile neutrinos have only some uh, indirect effect by some small unitarity, non-unitarity of the effective missing matrix. But uh, this I will explain uh, in detail in part, in part uh, three. Uh, in general, uh, if we go uh, beyond the ideology of the CISO mechanism, then uh, there can be sterile neutrinos at all mass scales. And in particular, people have, discussed, I have considered the, the existence of sterile neutrinos at uh, uh, several mass scales uh, uh, that uh, some are listed here. So uh, <clears throat> as you see from the, in the first item, uh, I, list, I just mentioned the, the ex possible existence of uh, heavy sterile neutrinos at the TV mass scale. This uh, can be connected with some form of low energy CSO in, that is uh, can occur in many models. And uh, the effect of the uh, presence of this heavy sterile neutrino can be uh, detected at LHC of, uh, or future uh, high energy colliders. But I will not uh, treat uh, this uh, case in these lectures. Then there is also the possibility to have uh, um, medium heavy sterile neutrinos at the KV mass scale. These uh, uh, sterile neutrinos can be dark matter and uh, also these are not uh, treated in this lecture. In this lecture, I will uh, uh, consider the, uh, the, the effect of the light sterile neutrinos at the electrovolt mass scale, which can generate a short baseline neutrino oscillation and explain some experimental anomaly that, uh, uh, anomalies that I will 
um, discussed just in the in the first part of this lecture. And they can also have the cosmological effect that I will uh, uh, discuss in the part two. There is also the possibility to have a very, very light sterile neutrinos much below the electron, electron volt mass scale that they can also have some uh, mm, small uh, phenomenological effect, but also this uh, is a topic that I, I will not uh, discuss. <clears throat> so, uh, as I said before, um, in order to understand uh, what is the effect of sterile neutrinos in oscillations, we need uh, first uh, to understand oscillations. So I will uh, spend uh, the first part of this lecture just to uh, uh, remind you or explain you what is the physics of neutrino oscillations and uh, starting with the uh, standard framework of the normal tree neutrino mixing in which there are, there are no uh, sterile neutrinos. So uh, neutrino oscillation is, fact, uh, is based on, on the fact that uh, uh, the uh, uh, interacting flavor neutrinos, which are the electron, muon, and tau neutrino, do not uh, um, have a definite mass, but are mixed by the uh, of uh, three massive neutrinos. And this I will explain uh, in the part three how these uh, mixtures arise. Uh, so uh, the three flavor neutrinos uh, uh, interact through uh, charge current weak interaction, and this is the Hamiltonian of the weak interaction. So each uh, flavor neutrino is associated with the corresponding uh, charged electron. So when a flavor neutrino uh, interact, it generates the corresponding charged electron. So we can distinguish this. Uh, uh, detect these neutrinos and distinguish the, their flavor just by uh, distinguishing which charged electron is producing. Uh, mm, so these are, are uh, fields of uh, uh, neutrinos which uh, have a definite flavor, which are a mixture of uh, uh, fields of neutrinos with a definite mass, which are new one, new two, and new three. And uh, the connection is given by the uh, unitary three by three uh, mixing matrix that can be that is written here. Uh, mm, so the, these are the fields, and the fields uh, contain the uh, creation uh, of uh, um, the, the operator, the, the creation and discussion operators of the particles that uh, uh, correspond to the states. So uh, since a um, the electron neutrino here is uh, uh, the adjoint one. Then, uh, when it creates an, an, an so this is the electron neutrino field. When it creates an electron neutrino state, the uh, mixing matrix uh, gets uh, the uh, operation of charge conjugation. So this is a technical detail, but you can see that apart from this technical detail. The, the mixing of the uh, states which descri describe the physical neutrinos and, and the fields is the same. So it is given by the, uh, by the elements of the, of the mixing matrix. So now um, I also uh, want to uh, just uh, explain that uh, it is important that when we um, discuss uh, uh, neutrino physics and in particular oscillations, the um, we must take into account that uh, neutrinos are, uh, that we can detect are ultra relativistic. Uh, so we can make a, an ultra relativistic approximation in the uh, derivation of the oscillation probability. And this is uh, not because all the neutrinos are ultra relativistic. There are uh, around, uh, uh, so the sources of neutrino produce also uh, no relativistic neutrinos, but we cannot detect them. We can detect uh, neutrinos only through uh, processes like uh, charge current uh, um, uh, processes or uh, elastic scattering processes that are uh, given here. And uh, in all these cases, there is a threshold for the detection of the neutrinos. So from a simple kinematical calculation here, one can uh, find that all these uh, processes which are used to detect uh, uh, the uh, flavor neutrinos have a threshold. And uh, the lowest threshold that, uh, that is achieved is for this uh, um, gallium uh, detection of electron neutrinos that is used for uh, detecting uh, neutrinos uh, from the sun. And the threshold is about uh, 0.2 MeV. 
And if you go to other processes, you can see that the threshold uh, uh, increases. So in practice, uh, for the charge current process, the lowest threshold is about uh, uh, 0.2 uh, uh, MeV. For the elastic scattering processes, uh, there is uh, no threshold because the, uh, the final state is uh, equal to the initial state. But uh, one must take into account that uh, uh, all the, uh, this, um, uh, um, the detectors have a, a background. So there are a lot of sources of background, uh, so electronic noise and also uh, radioactivity uh, that uh, uh, make things such that one cannot detect also, uh, uh, also with uh, these processes neutrinos which have uh, energy which is larger than about 0.2 uh, MeV. And this is the, was the, is done in the Borexino detector. And uh, for the, um, for the uh, normal uh, neutrinos, so uh, that are uh, mu1, mu2, and mu3, we know from laboratory and astrophysical limits that uh, the mass, their masses is uh, much smaller than one electron volt. So uh, not much smaller, it's smaller than one electron volt. And uh, so uh, you can see that uh, all these neutrinos, when we detect them, uh, they are ultra relativistic because uh, the energy is much smaller, much larger than the, the, the mass. And uh, for the oscillations also, we consider light sterile neutrinos which uh, with a mass at the electron volt scale. So a, a maximum mass, uh, let's say of around 10 electron volt. So also these are uh, ultra relativistic. So in the phenomenology, we'll uh, consider ultra relativistic neutrinos. And now let us see how uh, we can get uh, um, the oscillations. So uh, here I consider the, uh, a, a neutrino source, which uh, produces uh, some neutrino with a definite flavor, which I call alpha. So alpha here is e, e or mu or tau. And, uh, and then I have a detector which uh, uh, detects a different flavor beta at some distance, which I call L. And uh, you can see that at uh, the beginning, uh, due to the neutrino mixing, the uh, uh, neutrino with a definite flavor alpha is just a precise linear combination of the three massive neutrinos, nu1, nu2, and nu3. And this is at the source, so at the time equals zero. When the uh, three massive neutrino uh, propagate, then the, uh, the propagation is given by the uh, uh, Schrodinger equation. This is a propagation in vacuum. And uh, uh, the, the solution of the Schrodinger equation tells us that uh, uh, each of these massive neutrino evolves a phase, which is uh, uh, given by uh, the corresponding energy. So uh, nu1 will have a phase which is determined by E1, nu2 by E2, and nu3 by E3. Uh, but uh, now uh, we must take into account that these neutrinos have a different masses. So if we uh, consider uh, that uh, we assume that they have all the same momentum because they propagate all in the same direction, then uh, we uh, can calculate for each of them the corresponding uh, energy, which are different because the mass is different. And this means that, that uh, these uh, three uh, neutrinos evolve uh, different phases. So after some time, the linear combination of uh, the three massive neutrinos will be different from the original one. And this means that, that this will not be uh, anymore a, a pure neutrino flavor alpha, but it will have also a comp components of the, the, of the different flavors beta. Uh, to calculate what is the uh, uh, oscillation probability, we can uh, write the, um, so first uh, here I, I approximated time with the distance using the ultra relativistic approximation that uh, I explained in the, in the previous slide. And uh, uh, so uh, we can write the uh, evolved uh, neutrino state at a distance L as a, a superposition of the three massive neutrino states with the corresponding uh, phases. And here uh, it is convenient to uh, uh, factorize out of the sum a, a, the, the contribution of the momentum, which is the same for the three uh, massive neutrinos. 
And then uh, inside the, the sum, the phase is determined by the difference between EK and T. And uh, now if we adopt the uh, ultra relativistic approximation, we can approximate EK in this way. And then EK minus P is just given by uh, uh, the square of the neutrino mass divided by 2e, where e is uh, practically the, uh, uh, is, this is a conventional notation, e is equal to p in the approximation uh, uh, in which we neglect the effect of the neutrino masses. So here we have a, a, a simplification here, and we have the contribution of the square of the neutrino masses, which come from the uh, dispersion relation here. Uh, so uh, our state now is this one, which is written here. Now to find that the uh, oscillation probability into a, a, a different uh, flavor beta, then we need uh, to uh, project this uh, evolved state on, on, the, on the state of the corresponding to the flavor beta, which is given here. And then we take the modulo square to get, uh, to, to get uh, the probability. Now, uh, uh, in the, the, so the, 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 what we get is this expression here. And you can see that uh, when we take the modulo square, the, this phase, common phase, uh, disappears. And we end uh, with a, an expression with, uh, depend, which depends only on the uh, square of the neutrino masses divided by, by the energy and uh, multiplied by the distance. One can do easily this uh, modulo square and one can get uh, this uh, uh, general expression for the uh, probability in which actually one, uh, here I, I did not even uh, uh, limit the number of uh, the massive state to three. So this is the general uh, expression which is applied also in the case in which uh, the number of massive neutrinos uh, is, ma is uh, larger than three. And so, yes, please. Somebody, okay. I, I forgot to say that if somebody has uh, some questions, you can interrupt me in any moment. Okay. Um, so you can see that uh, um, uh, this uh, oscillation probability depends on the elements of the mixing matrix and on the data m squares. And also, uh, so, and these are quantities which are. Uh, determined by nature, and these are the quantities that we want to measure in neutrino oscillation experiments. Different experiments will have a different uh, source the test of distance and also different ranges for the, for the energy of the neutrino. Uh, in order to understand uh, uh, what is the uh, effect of the, the, of the oscillations, uh, it is often uh, convenient to adopt the uh, two neutrino mixing uh, approximation. Uh, in this case, we consider the, 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 the mixing of two flavors, which are I call here alpha and beta, with only two massive neutrinos. And uh, uh, so in this case, the mixing matrix is very simple. It's uh, just a two by two orthogonal uh, uh, rotation, uh, which is parameterized by a, a mixing angle theta. And there is only one delta m square, which is the difference between the two uh, massive neutrinos. And one can easily find that, that, that the transition probability from one flavor to another flavor is given by this expression, which uh, shows uh, the, the oscillatory behavior of the probability because we have a sine square theta, uh, sine, sine square to theta, which is the amplitude, and then the square square of uh, this uh, phase, which is oscillating and uh, depends on, on the distance. Uh, in the uh, terminology of neutrino oscillations, uh, these are called the transition probabilities from uh, one flavor alpha to a different flavor beta. And uh, people speak also about the survival probability, that is the, that are the probability that the uh, neutrino remains the, uh, is detected with the same flavor as, as the original one. Uh, and uh, this uh, in, the, in the simplest game of two neutrino mixing is just given by one minus uh, the uh, transition probability because just of conservation of, uh, of probability. In the cases of three neutrino mixing, the, the relations is more complicated. So um, this is a simple expression of two neutrino mixing shows us uh, how the uh, probability can change as a function of distance 
and uh, you can see that uh, the uh, amplitude of the oscillations, which is determined by sun square to theta, determine the maximum uh, transition probability. And uh, the probability is oscillating, and uh, we can define that the oscillator, uh, oscillation length when the uh, phase uh, is equal to 2 pi, and uh, actually is equal to pi, because uh, uh, for pi, then the sign um, uh, reaches this uh, quantity reaches 0. Uh, and then uh, we can determine the uh, oscillation length which is uh, uh, just uh, the, the length of this, uh, um, when the, the complete, a complete cycle is, uh, is uh, uh, reached. Uh, and then um, this uh, shows that uh, you can see that the oscillation length is inversely, inversely proportional to, uh, to delta m square. And uh, this means that, that uh, uh, we can uh, uh, see the oscillations if the delta, I mean, oscillation on the macroscopic distance only if the delta m square is, uh, is, uh, is small. So only if the uh, difference of the neutrino masses is very small. So this is a, a, a very nice uh, um, thing that shows that, that, that neutrino oscillations are the optimal tool to uh, reveal the existence of tiny neutrino masses because if the masses are small, the delta m squares will be small and we can observe the oscillation at, uh, at, uh, at uh, a macroscopic uh, distance. Uh, mm, this is a different way to, 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 to write the probability of uh, two neutrino mixing and uh, 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 of two neutrino oscillations. Uh, in the case of two neutrino mixing, then uh, uh, you can see that uh, here I put uh, uh, dimensional quantities because uh, uh, this help us to understand the classification of the uh, neutrino experiments because uh, uh, it is clear that uh, if one is too close to the, uh, to the um, so if the detector is too close to the source, then we are here and the oscillation did not, did not have time to, to, to develop, so one cannot see anything. So one can see the uh, oscillations only if this quantity is uh, um, uh, sufficiently large, let's say uh, larger than about uh, 0.1 as a, just a reference uh, uh, scale. Uh, and uh, this uh, allows us to classify the uh, experiments because uh, when this, uh, um, this uh, uh, L over E is uh, very small, so where we, have a, 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 we are at short distance, we have the so-called long short baseline experiments in which uh, this, uh, uh, this phase, uh, 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 in order to be, this space can be large only if the time square is relatively large. So uh, the short base and experiments can detect something since L over E is small, then they can detect something if the time square is relatively large. And uh, uh, the classification is uh, uh, such uh, uh, that the short base and experiments are experiments which uh, have L over E, which is short, shorter than 10 uh, meters over MEV or 10 kilometers over GV. And the, 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 the first um, units are convenient when we discuss the reactor neutrinos, so neutrinos which are produced by intermonuclear reactor, and I will discuss them because uh, the, uh, these neutrinos have an energy typically of the order of uh, uh, MeV. And the detectors, uh, short base and experiments detector are uh, at a distance uh, of about 10 meters. Instead, uh, uh, accelerator neutrinos are produced by, uh, with energy which, are la which is larger, and it is of the order of the GeV. And in this case, uh, the short baseline experiments are at a distance of about uh, uh, one kilometer. So uh, in this experiment, uh, as I say, the um, delta m square that can be seen is only, uh, must be very relatively large. So uh, it can be seen only, uh, the oscillation can be seen only if the delta m square is larger than about 0.1 electron volt square. Uh, to, to see uh, the oscillations due to delta m squares of uh, um, uh, 
smaller than 10 squares, then we need to increase the source, the test or distance if we uh, keep the, energy, the same uh, scale of energies. And so log, log base N experiment have a, a scale which is uh, 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 about 1000 meters over MeV for L over, L over E for the reactor and neutrinos and 1000 kilometers over GV for uh, accelerator neutrinos. And these experiments are uh, uh, sensitive to the time squares that go uh, to about 10 to the minus three electron volt square. Then uh, uh, smaller values of daytime squares can be uh, reached for uh, uh, experiments which uh, uh, use atmospheric neutrinos. So atmospheric neutrinos are neutrinos which are uh, produced uh, by the cosmic ray interaction uh, with the atmosphere all uh, around the Earth. So they arrive to us uh, from all directions uh, of the atmosphere. And in particular, we have the um, atmospheric neutrinos which come from below, so from the opposite side of the Earth, that, uh, um, that have a propagation distance of about uh, 30,000 kilometers. So uh, in this case, uh, the distance is much larger and uh, these experiments can be sensitive to the time squares uh, uh, as a small as 10 to the minus four electron volt square. Uh, and uh, finally, in this uh, uh, classification, we have the solar neutrino experiments, which uh, use the solar neutrinos, which come from, from the sun, which is uh, uh, very far away. So, uh, and in this case, uh, the very large sun-earth distance is such that, uh, one, uh, that this experiment can be sensitive to uh, the time square, which is as small as 10 to the minus 11 electron volt square. Uh, so before uh, going to some phenomenological uh, discussion, uh, then uh, let me uh, just uh, remind you that uh, uh, what is the connection between the neutrinos and antineutrinos. So, uh, so far I, I have uh, de derived the oscillation probability for neutrinos. One can do the same for antineutrinos. Uh, I mean, the same type of calculation, but uh, a, a different way is to uh, use the symmetries which, uh, uh, which uh, uh, connect neutrinos to antineutrinos, which is a more elegant way to uh, transform the oscillation probability of neutrinos into that of antineutrinos. Now you know that the neutrinos are uh, left-handed and antineutrinos are uh, right-handed. So uh, neutrinos and antineutrinos are, co are, are connected by a so-called CP transformation. So in the CP for transformation, we need to uh, trans we, we transform uh, particle into antiparticle and uh, uh, through the operation of charge conjugation and parity uh, uh, transform left-handed uh, into right-handed. And this uh, uh, is shown here by this uh, picture in which uh, uh, if you consider uh, the um, left-handed neutrinos which propagate with the uh, helicity which is in the uh, opposite direction of the velocity, then uh, you apply a CP mirror in which you have a normal mirror which corresponds to the parity transformation and uh, a charge conjugation mirror that transforms neutrinos in antineutrinos, you get a, a right-handed antineutrinos here one, as one can uh, see um, uh, intuitively thinking uh, how a, a mirror works. So uh, neutrinos and antineutrinos are connected by the CP transformation. And uh, if we look at, uh, the, uh, at the fields, uh, then uh, the uh, CP transformation just uh, transform the uh, neutri massive neutrino fields into, into the CP transformed fields uh, and the uh, charge conjugation uh, uh, in, in implies a complex conjugation. So the elements of the mixing matrix are just the complex conjugated. So the only difference between the mixing of the uh, neutrinos and the antineutrinos is just uh, the uh, change of the elements of the mixing matrix uh, through a complex conjugation. And this is the same also for, for the states. So the simple way to uh, connect uh, the, uh, to transform the oscillation probability of neutrinos to the one of antineutrinos is just to uh, 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 transform the elements of the mixing matrix into the corresponding uh, complex uh, conjugated one. That is a written theorem. 
So this is a, a elegant and simple way to connect uh, the oscillation of neutrinos uh, to antineutrinos. And uh, here I want also to explain one important thing that uh, is important to, to understand the phenomenology of uh, neutrino oscillations. Namely that uh, uh, we, um, uh, even if the distance, uh, if we go to a, a distance which is sufficiently large to see the oscillations, uh, then not all, then if we go too far, we cannot see uh, the uh, actual oscillations because uh, uh, we cannot measure with infinite precision this uh, uh, probability. Uh, we can measure this probability only uh, taking into account the uncertainties, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, on the neutrino energy. So each uh, detector has some uh, energy resolution so we cannot uh, uh, measure with infinite precision the energy of, of the of the neutrino, but we have some uh, range uh, on which we can determine uh, this this energy. And uh, this fact um, um, is important because uh, uh, when we average the oscillation probability with uh, uh, taking into account the energy resolution then we, we get a suppression of the oscillatory term. And uh, here, the, uh, I, uh, to, to, uh, to, to show explicitly the, the oscillatory term, I have written the sine square uh, as one half of one minus cosine. And this is because the average of the cosine is zero. So if we, uh, this term is average, then it will disappear and we uh, disappear, the, uh, the oscillation effect will disappear. So uh, uh, when we average the oscillation probability, we must take into account of the uh, resolution uh, function of the, of the detector and uh, average this cosine over uh, this resolution function. Now, if we are uh, in the, the result of this averaging is shown in this, in this uh, plot where I plotted the uh, transition probability as a function of the distance. So now you can see that uh, if we are relatively uh, uh, close to the detector, then the um, unaveraged uh, uh, probability, which is given by the blue line, and the average probability, which is given by the uh, red line, they are almost uh, the same because the uh, effect of the, uh, of the resolution is uh, small. But uh, when we go to uh, larger uh, distances, then this phase uh, becomes large because L is large. And then when we uh, average over the energy resolution of the detector, just uh, uh, this within the integration, this phase uh, varies by, by several, by, by many pi. So as uh, we go farther, farther from the, from the source, then the, this phase becomes uh, larger and larger. And uh, so the, the effect of this uh, resolution it will be to have uh, to, to sum the, this oscillation, uh, oscillating term over many pi's. And the, 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 the effect is just uh, that the, the cosine disappears. So the average of the cosine goes to zero very far from, from the source. Uh, if the average of the cosine goes to zero, this uh, does not mean that we don't see a flavor transition. So we still see a flavor transition, but we see just the average of flavor transitions, which uh, do not uh, depend anymore on distance. So uh, we can see some effect, but uh, we cannot see that uh, this effect changes with, uh, with the distance. And the same is done, uh, is important when we uh, measure a neutrino spectrum. So when we measure a neutrino spectrum, we can uh, see the um, uh, oscill effect of the oscillation through the distortions of the, of the spectrum, which is due to the, uh, to the probability with the, which depend on the energy. Now, uh, uh, this is a plot of the average probability as a function of energy, which is uh, uh, different from the one in the, as a function of distance because the energy is, is at the denominator. So if we go to uh, uh, small energies, then uh, this uh, um, uh, uh, phase here becomes very large and we have this aver averaging effect. 
And uh, if we, instead, if we go to uh, sufficiently large energies, then we get uh, the, uh, we can see the average oscillations and uh, you can see that the, uh, that, uh, the red uh, uh, curve is more or less here, the same as the blue curve, but here we can see only the average. So this means that if we want to see the uh, effect of the energy distortions, we need to go to sufficiently large energies to be in, in this regime. In this regime, we, we don't see a, a, a distortion of the energy spectrum. And this means that the, the um, effect of the oscillations is uh, uh, more uh, difficult to, 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 to be seen because uh, one uh, has to rely on the absolute uh, value of the, of, of the event rates. That is, a, is typically a quantity which is, uh, uh, has larger uncertainties. Instead, the uh, distortion of the spectrum typically is a quantity which is uh, um, uh, a smaller uncertainty, so one can uh, see the oscillation in a, in a moderately independent way. So now let us, uh, um, let me, so uh, is there any question about uh, this? Um, so I see that uh, I speak for about 45 minutes. So maybe this is a time uh, to, to ask if somebody has a question, so I, I can answer and uh, um, before moving to, to some description of, uh, phenomenological results. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, sure. Uh, in the two previous slides, I, yes. it was actually not clear for me the difference between the, um, why in a situation we have a suppression and in the other situation we have an enhancement. It's not clear to me the difference between the, is it this phi function that changes? Uh, sorry? Uh, say, uh, so, what was the difference between the, the two situations, between the one right. in this slide and the next one? Yeah. Ah, you mean the, between this slide and the next one? Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, practically, I, I plotted always the oscillation probability, uh, but uh, this is as a function of distance, and this is as a function of energy. Ah, okay, okay, yes, okay. I didn't realize all that. Okay, yeah, okay. so yeah. you, you see, uh, we have two uh, physical quantities that uh, determine the oscillation. So uh, one can uh, observe the oscillation by uh, looking at the variation of, of the probability as a function of distance uh, or uh, as a um, variation of the probability as a function of energy. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, I didn't yeah. notice okay. about the X axis. Actually, yeah, yeah. The, the second one is uh, just to explain that the second one is uh, uh, often more used because uh, typically experiments measure some energy spectrums, but uh, they, they cannot move the detector. So as we will see, there are some experiments, a few experiments which can move the detector and observe the oscillation as a function of distance. but. Uh, most of the experiment has a fixed detector, so the source detector distance is fixed, and what they can see is as an effect of oscillation, it's just a dis distortion of the energy spectrum. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hmm. Any, any other question? Okay, if not, uh, I think uh, I, I don't need to make a, a stop. So if nobody wants to make a stop, I can continue and um, go on with the, with the lectures. So um, now I, I would uh, like to, to discuss the, just to, to make a summary of the um, uh, results in the framework of three neutrino mixing and then I will explain how this is extended to to take to the possibility of having active sterile neutrino oscillations so uh, 
the framework of three neutrino mixing, uh, we have uh, three flavor neutrinos, which are a mixture of three massive neutrinos. And in this case, uh, uh, as we have seen, the mixing matrix is a three by three uh, matrix. And uh, a, um, a, a, a problem is, uh, I mean, a, a, a thing that is useful to do is to parameterize this uh, matrix. Uh, in some way with a, uh, with a number of uh, um, quantities which take into account that this uh, uh, matrix is unitary. So if we have uh, considered the, the form that I wrote in the beginning, this is a uh, three by three mixing matrix with uh, uh, nine uh, elements, but uh, uh, taking into account the unitarity, we, uh, we know that uh, the, the, the physical quantities are less than the, than the nine elements, the complex elements. And uh, in particular, in the case of three neutrino mixing, we have uh, three mixing angles, which uh, um, adopting a, 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 what the so-called standard parameterization are, are uh, uh, written here. So the mixing angle are theta one, two, theta uh, two, three, and theta one, three. Uh, yes, and this uh, in this notation uh, is a short uh, notation like C, C means cosine and uh, S means sine. Uh, so we have a uh, three mixing angle and uh, one uh, and uh, uh, one phase which is associated with uh, the uh, angle uh, theta one three in this uh, standard parameterization and this is the so-called Dirac phase. And uh, in addition, we can also uh, also have other two phases in the case of the uh, if neutrinos are Majorana particles, and these uh, uh, in reality are not uh, uh, observable in the oscillation experiments. So in the oscillation experiment uh, that I will discuss in the following, we uh, will be concerned only uh, on the first part of this uh, uh, mixing matrix. Um, the reason, just uh, to say very briefly, is that uh, uh, these Majorana phases are not observable because this uh, can be observed only uh, in processes in which, uh, um, which can occur only if neutrinos are Majorana particles. So you can, we have uh, the uh, violation of the total lepton number by two units. And this, uh, I will explain this uh, in, in the third part. Uh, but uh, in the normal oscillation, we have the flavor transition from one flavor to another, so the total lepton number is conserved, and these uh, phases do not have uh, any effect. And uh, uh, as you can see here in the standard parameterization of the mixing matrix, uh, the, uh, the mixing is obtained by the um, multiplication of uh, three rotations. Three, three rotations. One is the, is the is in the one two plane. Then the, we have a rotation here in the two three plane, and this is a rotation in the uh, one three plane. And each rotation correspond to the corresponding uh, uh, mixing matrix. So in the oscillation experiments, we can uh, which we we we, we can uh, see uh, measure the the mixing angles, the three mixing angle, the Dirac uh, CP violation phase. And uh, we have also the effect of two uh, delta m squares uh, in the case of uh, three neutrino mixing. So uh, now, just a, 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 a brief. Uh, Can I ask you a question? Yes, sure. Uh, please go to the previous slide. Yes. Okay. Uh, compare with the quark sector. Um, my, my first, first question is. Uh, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, it, for the quark sector, this uh, rotation angle and uh, the CP phase actually come from the the Yukawa coupling. Uh, here, I uh, how how do you induce the uh, this parameter? Is there any Yukawa coupling for the for the neutrino or something like that? Yes, uh, this I will discuss in the in the part uh, three. So. Uh, if we consider the uh, Dirac neutrinos, uh, then uh, we will have a, a mixing, which is given only by the first part of this uh, matrix. And this is very uh, exactly the same as the mixing of quarks. So uh, also uh, Dirac neutrino masses can be generated by the standard Higgs mechanism. So there will be some uh, Yukawa coupling 
that are analogous to those of the quartz and this uh, Yukawa coupling uh, uh, can have complex elements which correspond to the Dirac phase. So the answer is yes. Okay, uh, uh, another maybe naive question is uh, yes. uh, for the uh, for the quark sector, we never uh, talk about the uh, the the oscillation between quark just because they are they are condensed condensed it con just because the condensation of the quark, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the for the quark, uh, I mean oscillations uh, for the leptons for the neutrinos is some uh, phenomenon which uh, occurs because neutrinos are free particles, so they can propagate in vacuum. The quarks uh, by themselves, they cannot propagate in vacuum, so we cannot have a similar uh, oscillations uh, for the quarks. So in the quark sector, there is oscillation in the K, K on sector, but uh, this is, uh, has some analogies, but it's a different uh, process. Okay. okay. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I have a very naive question. So the parameterization that you have shown, uh, the CK matrix, so this is not the unique choice of the parameterization, uh, right? Not, uh, can you say it again? I did not understand. Yeah, so is it a unique choice of uh, choosing the U matrix? No, 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 yes, for, uh, for sure, I, I mean, uh, this is a, a, a standard parameterization. This is a, uh, no, I don't know if it is infinite, but a very large uh, number of uh, possible parameterizations that, uh, um, for example, you can uh, have a different parameterization just by changing the order of these multiplications. So if you, if you put, for example, the rotation in the one two plane in the beginning, uh, you get a different parameterization. So this is clear. Uh, this is a convention that is uh, adopted because it is uh, convenient and uh, also because uh, we need uh, some uh, common uh, framework to, to have a discussion about mixing angles. If everybody use different parameterization and then the uh, mixing angles will be different, uh, nobody understand anything. So we need, uh, uh, unfortunately this was uh, uh, until I, I think 20 or 30 years ago, people use different parameterization. Now there is a consensus among everybody to use uh, this uh, standard parameterization. So when we speak about uh, the angle theta 1, 3, theta 2, 3, theta uh, 1, 2, then uh, we know that uh, we refer to this uh, uh, standard parameterization. Yeah, so this DFCP phase associated with this uh, theta 1, 3 angle, so with the other choice of the parameterization, there can be some phases with the one, two, and the two, three pins, right? Uh, sorry, I do not understand well what you said. Say, can you say? Yeah, that? yeah. So basically, the DXCP phase delta one three, which is associated with uh, the theta one three. So with the different choices of parameterization, we can have some DXCP phases uh, in the two, three plane or the one, two plane. Yes, 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 uh, for sure. Uh, so, it, yeah, so experimentally, uh, like there is a measurement of those uh, CP uh, or the prediction of those CP phases. So, what are that particular uh, uh, CP phase? Like it is one, three, or how can I know that this CP phase is the related with in the one, three plane experimentally? No, experimentally. Uh... So the parameter, the, the, the physics is independent of the parameterization. So uh, the effect on the oscillations will be the same for any parameterization that you, one uses. Then uh, when we extract uh, information from the analysis of the data, we uh, must use some quantities which are uh, determined by the convention. So by the common convention that we uh, we adopt. So it is convenient to express the uh, result of the experiments in terms of this uh, phase, which is called here in this slide is called delta one three. Some uh, very often is called just delta CP without any specification. But now by convention, we know that this is the one associated with theta one three. 
if uh, an experiment can give also result, uh, express the result in terms of a different phase, but then uh, this will not be understood by, um, it will be difficult to, to connect uh, then uh, the result with, uh, with the common uh, uh, convention that we, 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 we are using. But uh, the physical effect is the same. And actually, the, the best way uh, would be not to use uh, uh, the phase, but you, to talk about the so-called just cock invariant. So the just cock invariant is a quantity which express the CP violation independently on, on the parameterization. And probably that would be the best thing to do, but uh, it is not done. So in practice, uh, nowadays, all the experiments talk about the uh, Delta CP or Delta one three or, or Delta, uh, and they refer to this phase. But uh, this is uh, only a convention. The, 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 the physics uh, is the same for, for any convention that we, we adopt. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, one more thing. Yeah. Hello? Yes. Yeah, one more thing is that uh, when you write the energy of the neutrino as E equal to some P plus M square over two, P or 2E in the ultra relativistic limit. Yes. Yeah. So basically, this is a wet packet uh, solution that you are uh, dealing with. So, uh, like, how good is it to choose the momentum has some fixed value, or like, is there any uncertainty in the wet packet in the momentum space? Oh, yes, but uh, now I cannot explain this. I think uh, otherwise I, I will not. Uh, so maybe I think uh, tomorrow there will be some uh, office hours and uh, we can discuss that uh, during the office hours because it's a long story. Uh, I cannot explain now the way packet uh, effect, but you are right. There is some uh, way packet effect, uh, that, but it needs a long discussion. So, okay. Okay, thank you for the question. So thank you. make the question again tomorrow during the office hours. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we I have to go on because otherwise uh, I, I I will not be able to to discuss everything. Uh, so uh, uh, because we we this is just the introduction and then we need to go to the sterile neutrinos. So um, just uh, to, to be brief, uh, I, I want to just to remind the information that we have on the, uh, on the uh, mixing of the normal three neutrinos. So the mixing of the normal three neutrinos, uh, we know that uh, they, they oscillate and uh, there are many uh, oscillation experiments and we can di 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 divide them in, in three categories that give uh, information on different uh, elements of the of the mixing. So uh, we start uh, with the solar neutrino sector. So the solar neutrino sector uh, give information of the mixing angle theta one two, which is uh, in this uh, rotation here. And on the solar delta m square, that uh, by convention is uh, the delta m square uh, two one. And uh, as you can see here, there are many solar neutrino experiments which observe that the transition of the uh, solar electron neutrinos into new, new and new tau. And uh, there was also uh, the Kamland experiment uh, which uh, uh, observed the disappearance of uh, electron antineutrinos from reactors at a very long distance, which uh, uh, this disappearance is due to the same daytime square, which is the solar daytime square, which is uh, relatively uh, small. So this is about seven times 10 to the minus five electron volt square. And the current experiments, uh, I mean, the, the global fit of the uh, experimental data allow us to have information on the value of data, the solar daytime square with a 2.3% uh, accuracy. I took this number from this uh, talk by Antonio Marrone in the last uh, NUTEL uh, conference. Um, then uh, uh, the solar neutrino uh, experiment give uh, the solar uh, experiment give also information on the mixing angle theta one true that uh, that is given here. So we um, we 
we know that the angle is uh, uh, relatively large, and this is a, 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 a one. Uh, I mean, uh, this shows that the mixing of the neutrinos is much different from the mixing of the quarks because in the quarks uh, uh, sector the mixing angles are very small. Instead, in the case of neutrinos, the mixing angle is uh, uh, relatively large. And uh, uh, it is not maximal, so maximal mixing will be uh, 45 degrees, which uh, will correspond to sine square theta equal 0.5. So it is not maximal, but uh, it is uh, uh, comparable, uh, almost maximal. Um, uh, then uh, we have the atmospheric sector. The atmospheric sector also here. There are many. Uh, there are several atmospheric experiments which. Uh, uh, observe the different type of oscillation. So these are oscillation of nu mu into nu tau. So you can see that uh, solar is nu e into nu mu and nu tau. Atmospheric is nu mu into nu tau. And uh, these uh, oscillations have been observed by atmospheric experiment and also by long baseline accelerator experiments. And uh, this uh, give uh, information on the um, so-called atmospheric delta m square, which is uh, larger than the solar delta m square, and this is uh, about uh, 30 times larger than the solar um, delta m square, so it's about 2.5 or 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 electron volt square. And uh, here you can see that uh, there are two values which uh, are connected with the possibility to have two hierarchy, two ordering for the neutrino masses that I will uh, discuss uh, in the following uh, uh, slides. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, atmospheric neutrino experiment measure the mixing angle theta to three. And in this case, uh, we uh, know that uh, the, this mixing angle is uh, even larger than the solar mixing angle. And uh, uh, it is probably uh, larger than 45 degrees. Uh, and uh, it is in the, the so-called second orthant. Uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, actually this is the, the angle which is more difficult to measure and it has the, the, the larger uh, uncertainty. And then uh, we have the measurements of the uh, third mixing angle, which is theta 1, 3, which is the smallest one. And uh, in fact, uh, until um, 2012, uh, it was thought that maybe this angle is uh, very, very small or even zero. So there were many models which uh, predicted uh, it to be zero. But uh, uh, in 2012, uh, the uh, experiment, uh, reactor experiment, Diabay, first Diabay and then Reno and Double Show, and also accelerator experiment uh, measured an effect of uh, uh, this uh, mixing angle. Uh, by looking at oscillations or transition of new mu to, into nu e due to the atmospheric uh, delta m square. So these are uh, due to the same delta m square as the atmospheric uh, um, uh, oscillations, but uh, it's a different channel. So this is new mu nu tau, instead of this is a new mu nu e. And uh, uh, so now this uh, uh, mixing angle is the one that is uh, uh, measured with, uh, with the highest uh, accuracy, so it is uh, uh, rather well known. So uh, in general, uh, we, uh, what we don't know, uh, so we know uh, rather well now the uh, delta m square, uh, the two delta m square for thin neutrino mixing, that is the solar and the atmospheric delta m square, and the three mixing angle. What we don't know uh, uh, is uh, the CP violating phase and also the ordering of the neutrino masses. So the CP violating phases can be uh, observed by uh, looking at the difference between the oscillations of neutrinos and antineutrinos. And uh, uh, here in this slide, I, I wrote the uh, uh, oscillation probability uh, separating a, a part which is CP conserving and the part which is uh, CP violating. And uh, the CP violating part will change the sign going from neutrinos to antineutrinos. Instead, the, uh, the first part will, will remain the same. So uh, the difference between the probability oscillation of neutrinos and antineutrinos depend on the, only on, the on, on this part, which is the CP violating part. And by measuring the difference in the, uh, in the oscillation of neutrinos and antineutrinos, one can uh, observe uh, the uh, CP violation. 
And uh, in particular, you can see that, uh, I mean, all the neutrino oscillations depend on the uh, this quarting re uh, rephasing invariance. So these are uh, products of the uh, four elements of the mixing matrix, which are uh, uh, invariant under uh, uh, rephasing of the elements of the mixing matrix, which is uh, uh, a, a convention. So this is related to uh, the discussion that uh, that was that uh, we made uh, in the question about uh, where we put uh, the CP violating phase. So if we put uh, the CP violation phase in different parts, we will have different convention, but the quartic rephasing invariant will, will remain the same. And in particular, CP violation depend on the uh, imaginary part of, the, uh, of this uh, quartic, uh, quartic product. And in the case of uh, three neutrino mixing, uh, it is possible to show that uh, all these uh, uh, imaginary parts are equal apart from a sign. So the CP violation can be quantified in a uh, parameterization independent way uh, just by, uh, 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 by uh, measuring this, uh, uh, this quantity here, which is called the Jarskov invariant. In the, in the case of uh, uh, the standard parameterization, this is the expression of the Jarskov invariant. So in practice, uh, uh, this is more elegant, but it is equivalent to measure the Jarskov invariant or the uh, phase delta, two, delta one three uh, as shown by this, uh, by this expression. Uh, and then another problem uh, that is not known is the neutrino mass ordering, because we know that uh, there are two delta m squares, which are the solar and the atmospheric delta m square, but uh, um, by taking into account that uh, the solar delta m square is about one third, uh, 30 times smaller than the atmospheric delta m square, one can easily see that uh, there are only two possibilities for the mass ordering uh, that, is, that are shown in these two plots. So in the first, uh, in the left one, we have the so-called normal ordering in which the uh, smaller delta m square is generated by the two lighter neutrinos. And in the inverted ordering, uh, we have the, 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 the situation opposite in which the smaller delta m square is just generated by the two uh, heavier neutrinos and we have a, a, a lighter uh, uh, new tree, which is uh, separated by the atmospheric delta m square here. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the terminology is due to the fact that uh, we expect that uh, 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 if there is a hierarchy of neutrino masses, then that it is more maybe not more lateral because all the other particles have a, a, a hierarchy of masses. Then we expect this uh, pattern of, of normal ordering, but. Uh, from the, uh, uh, what we know from the experiment, uh, also this so far, also the inverted ordering is, uh, um, is uh, allowed. Uh, the data, uh, the present data favor the normal ordering, but the inverted ordering is not uh, excluded. So now uh, I finish the discussion of the trinotino mixing and I want to introduce now the possibility to have more um, uh, massive neutrinos, and this will correspond to the existence of, of the sterile neutrinos. And uh, uh, the uh, existence of the sterile neutrinos is related uh, to the possibility to measure some uh, observation, possible observation of neutrino oscillation as short based and experiments, which cannot be explained by the um, uh, oscillations in the framework of three neutrino mixing that I have uh, discussed so far. And that is because uh, as we have seen the, uh, in the framework of three neutrino mixing, there are two delta m square, which are the solar and atmospheric delta m square, which are known rather well. And uh, uh, this, uh, also, this delta m square can be, can observe or uh, can determine, generate oscillations only uh, at a sufficiently large uh, distance. So, for example, if we uh, consider the, uh, the larger delta m square, this uh, that is the atmospheric delta m square, then uh, and we take some uh, uh, neutrino energy, uh, for example, for a typical uh, reactor neutrino experiment, this will be of the order of one MeV, then uh, this oscillation can be seen only at the distance which is larger than about one kilometer. 
if we go, uh, we put uh, the, the, the detector uh, in a short distance, like in short baseline experiments, that is where the distance is about 10 meters, then we cannot see these oscillations because they, we are too close to the, uh, to the detector. And for the solar oscillation, obviously this, uh, the distance is even, even larger. So if uh, we, there are some experiments which uh, see some oscillations at a, short, uh, at a shorter distance, this uh, need, uh, uh, cannot be explained in the framework of clean autonomy mixing and one need to enlarge the framework uh, to, with uh, additional massive uh, uh, neutrinos which correspond to the sterile neutrinos as I will uh, explain now in, in the following slides. Um, so first, uh, let us uh, um, be clear about uh, uh, why we have only three active neutrinos. And when we introduce new neutrinos, we talk about the sterile neutrinos. So we know for sure that there are only three uh, active neutrinos because the, uh, this number was measured with um, high accuracy at, at LEP. So LEP measured the uh, decay of the Z boson into, uh, into uh, couples of particles and antiparticles. So the Z boson can, uh, can decay into um, uh, charged lepton and antilepton, uh, quartz and antiquartz, and also neutrinos and antineutrinos. Anti so by measuring the uh, total uh, rate uh, of the decay of the Z boson and the uh, rate into visible particles, one uh, subtracting the two, one can uh, determine what is the so-called invisible rate of the of the Z boson, which uh, give uh, just uh, um, the decay is due to the decay into neutrinos and antineutrinos. And uh, uh, since we know what is the uh, the decay rate in each uh, neutrino pair, this decay will be uh, proportional to the number of neutrinos times the decay rate for each uh, neutrino, for each neutrino flavor. And uh, uh, as you can see here from this plot uh, on the right, this is a fit of the data using different number of active neutrinos. And you can see that the, the data uh, which are given by the, uh, by the red dot with a, with the uh, error bars, uh, which are very small. So in the plot, uh, the average, uh, the error bars are even increased by a factor of 10 in order to be visible. Otherwise they will not be visible. So the, the measurement is very precise. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, it, it fit, the data are fit uh, very well by the case of three neutrino mixing, uh, the existence of three active neutrinos. If you consider four or two, the, the data are completely uh, not fitted, so these cases are completely excluded. The uh, measurement that was done at the lab was uh, mm, uh, uh, for the number of neutrino, uh, active neutrinos uh, uh, was this number. So this was done in the, in the 90s. And uh, as you can see here, there, uh, at the time, uh, there, is, there was a, about two sigma discrepancy with respect to three. So this was a discrepancy that was uh, uh, solved uh, just by recently in a paper in which uh, they calculate better the uh, radiative correction to, the, to these processes. And now the, the, the number that these uh, authors obtain is a number which is uh, uh, Compati uh, which is three within one sigma. So there is a very good uh, uh, determination of the number of active neutrinos which are without uh, a, a, any anomaly. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, the in so we know that uh, the Z decides, decides into three active neutrinos, but uh, uh, these are the neutrino flavors. So uh, if we consider the mixing, the neutrino uh, flavors, so we know that there are three active neutrinos, but uh, the mixing can include uh, more than three massive neutrinos. So in general, we can have a, a, a N neutrino mixing with N is uh, uh, equal or larger than three. And uh, uh, the three active neutrinos will be uh, uh, superposition of uh, a number n of massive neutrinos, uh, which is uh, 
given by the uh, by a unitary uh, n by n mixing matrix. So this is uh, allowed by the uh, by the by this decay because here only the flavor neutrinos uh, in, uh, um, are uh, participating. So uh, we can expand the in general the uh, the flavor neutrinos into an arbitrary number of uh, of uh, massive neutrinos. And uh, so when we uh, consider the, 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 this uh, unitary mixing n by n, we can uh, uh, discuss the, the mass basis, which is on the right, and on the left, we have the flavor basis. And uh, this means that uh, uh, when we have n by n flavors, so the, uh, three, uh, the first three flavors will be the three active neutrinos, and the others will be all sterile. So these are uh, sterile, as I say in the, in the beginning, they are not interacting, so they don't interact with, with interaction and they do not, part, do not participate to the, uh, to the decay of the, of the, of the basic module. And uh, uh, we can have as many of them, it is, uh, does not uh, affect in any way the, uh, the decay of the Z boson. Uh, in the following, I will consider only the, 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 the simplest case of one sterile neutrinos, but as, uh, but as shown in this plot, we can have as many of them which can extend the uh, standard flavor of uh, three neutrino mixing. Um, if we want to uh, explain the, the so-called short base and anomalies that I will discuss in, in the following. So uh, if we add one uh, sterile neutrino at a scale of about uh, a mass scale of about one electron volt, then we get one additional delta m square, which we call can call delta m square short baseline, we can, which can uh, explain the anomalies. Of course, we can add more than one, but uh, this will only complicate the things. And uh, I will discuss uh, only briefly uh, the possible introduction of more than one. But um, most of what I will discuss is, will be in the so-called uh, three plus one uh, framework in which we have one, uh, one massive neutrino. So, and you, you notice that uh, we need to, uh, to, 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 to add a heavy neutrino because uh, the oscillation length is inversely proportional to the delta m square. So if we want to, uh, uh, um, to explain neutrino oscillation at a short end, uh, short baseline, so short and length, we need a, a larger delta m square. Uh, and here I also want to specify that, uh, uh, to clarify that uh, usually uh, there is this terminology that we have a electron volt, uh, a sterile neutrino at some scale, like electron volt scale in this case, but it can be also at some other scale. Uh, this is a, not a um, precise uh, uh, terminology. It's a, an approximate terminology, terminology to indicate uh, that uh, we have a, 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 some, a new massive neutrino at some electron volt scale or, or some other scale. And this massive neutrino is mainly sterile because uh, as I tried to explain before, uh, there is a difference between the flavor and the bus and the, the flavor is uh, what we call active and sterile, but uh, these uh, neutrinos do not have a definite mass. The definite mass, uh, massive neutrinos uh, are those uh, that we can put at the electron volt scale, and this neutrino will be mainly sterile, as you can see here from this plot, uh, from the colors. So you, you, we have a new massive neutrino at the electron volt scale, which we call mu4, and it is mainly sterile, which is given by this uh, magenta color, but uh, it must also have uh, some uh, uh, small mixing with the active neutrinos because uh, we need to have this uh, short baseline oscillation. If, if this will be completely sterile, then uh, we will be in no effect. So this massive new massive neutrino will be completely invisible. So we need uh, some small mixing of the new four with the active neutrinos in order to, 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 to see it, uh, to, and also to have an effect in the oscillation experiments as, as we will see uh, in, in the following slides. So, uh, 
so let me now uh, the, uh, show how the, the pattern of neutrino oscillation is changed uh, when we introduce this one massive neutrino. And uh, we, we can uh, now uh, consider uh, short base and experiments uh, in the uh, first in the framework of three neutrino mixing and uh, here I, I I want to just uh, to to explain again why in short base and experiments we cannot uh, uh, see the oscillations uh, in the framework of three neutrino mixing and what changes when when I introduce a, a new massive neutrino. So now, now let us consider the uh, short base and experiment and consider only three neutrino mixing. Now, as we have seen before, if we have a source with uh, some flavor alpha, then uh, the neutrino at, at, at the, at the um, uh, source has a, a precise uh, linear combination of the three massive neutrinos. Now, when we uh, go at some distance, which is not uh, sufficiently large, so we, we are uh, too close to the source, then the three phases uh, have uh, developed some small difference, but uh, this difference is, uh, uh, is practically negligible. So in this case, we can neglect the, uh, the effect of the difference of the mixing of the phases and uh, consider the two phases to be practically the same. In this case, uh, uh, we can factorize the phase out of, the, of this sum and uh, our uh, um, neutrino will, uh, will practically be, uh, will, will be exactly of the same flavor because this additional phase has no effect. So when we project on a different flavor, which uh, this phase disappear and we obtain the delta alpha beta. So this is uh, for a short base and experiment in, in the case in which we have only three neutrino mixing. So what uh, changes now if we add a new massive neutrino? A new massive neutrino will have a substantial mass difference, which is uh, because we, we, we choose a, a, a rather heavy new massive neutrino. And as, as you can see from this plot, the wiggles have a very short, much shorter uh, wavelength. So there is a visible difference between uh, these uh, two, uh, this uh, the, 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 the wave, the, the, the oscillation, the, the, yes, the, 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 the phases of the three normal neutrinos and the four neutrino, even if we have a, 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 a relatively short distance between the source and the detector. So here, uh, uh, my neutrino uh, in the initial flavor will be now a linear combination of four massive neutrinos. And uh, the, for the three, uh, first three, we can do the same as I do, did in the previous slides. So we, we, ne we neglect the difference in the phases because uh, this, as you can see from the plot, the, the, the difference are too small to be, to be seen. And uh, only the difference of the phase of the fourth neutrino is visible and uh, must be taken into account. So now we still, we, we clearly we cannot factorize the, 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 a common phase and, of, and do the same as I did in the previous slide. And in this case, the oscillation will be, um, uh, we will have some effect in the short baseline oscillations and the, the presence of this additional phase due to, due to the new four, uh, is such that the, uh, the probability of transition between different flavors is different from uh, uh, delta alpha beta. So the, the means that the, the uh, flavor neutrino uh, can change, that the uh, neutrino can change flavor. And here I am talking about the active neutrino. So here we are talking about the transition of the, uh, between for example, uh, new mu and new e, uh, due to the presence of the, uh, this additional uh, fourth uh, neutrinos. And uh, as you can see here, the, um, and, and, uh, so uh, as we will see in the following, this uh, oscillation probability depends on the additional daytime square. Uh, and I will derive uh, the precise uh, 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 expression for the probabilities in the following slides. Before going that, I, I want just to comment on the on some uh, uh, curiosity, let's say, uh, that uh, some seem that some people 
uh, present uh, the, the effect of the sterile neutrinos on the short base and oscillation uh, just by uh, explaining that the short base and transition between nu mu and nu e, for example, are due to uh, when we introduce a sterile neutrinos, uh, are due to this type of transition, like nu mu into nu sterile uh, that goes into nu e. And this is a very simple binded uh, um, uh, argument that is completely wrong. Uh, so I guess that uh, these people uh, were just to think about uh, how we can get uh, this oscillation uh, when we introduce a sterile neutrino, but uh, this is wrong. So as I, I, have, I explained here, we don't have an intermediate sterile state. The effect of the um, oscillation is due to the fact that we added a new massive neutrino, which generates some uh, phases, which uh, int make some interference with the uh, phases of the three normal neutrinos and generate the oscillation. So there is no intermediate uh, uh, sterile neutrino in this, uh, in this picture. And uh, this is also explained in this uh, uh, slide that uh, I will skip unless you can ask about that uh, if you want uh, later. So now um, let me uh, just uh, uh, discuss what are the possibilities for the possible schemes uh, when we add one uh, neut massive neutrino. So here we are talking about the so-called four neutrino mixing in which we have uh, uh, three normal neutrino, the three normal standard neutrinos plus one uh, non-standard uh, neutrino. And uh, uh, we have seen already that in the framework of three neutrino mixing, we have the problem of the mass ordering. Now, if we add uh, another massive neutrino, we will have uh, um, uh, increase this problem and we will have many more possibilities. And all the possibilities are uh, shown in this, uh, in, in this, uh, in this slide. And you can see that in these slides, I, I, dis I distinguish uh, three um, pattern, let's say. One is called two plus two, like the, uh, this is three plus one, and this is one plus three. So- Carlo, uh, Carlo this is Eligio. Um, yes. You have uh, about uh, 10 minutes, uh, just to leave a few minutes at the end for questions. So thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. So, um, Okay, yes, uh, so these are the, all, all the possibilities and uh, um, uh, you can uh, understand that uh, um, these possibilities are just based on the fact that we know the solar daytime square uh, that is small, the atmospheric daytime square which is larger and then we need a, a, a larger short base and daytime square. So taking into account these three fact one can arrange the four massive neutrinos, uh, the ordering of the four massive neutrinos in these uh, six ways. Uh, and uh, I grouped them in two, in, in, in three classes that have two elements. So the first one is the two plus two that has uh, two, uh, these two different possibilities that you can see here. And this is called two plus two because uh, the uh, solar and atmospheric daytime square uh, separate the neutrinos which are uh, in pairs and uh, these pairs are separated by the, uh, uh, by the uh, short baseline, new short baseline uh, data in square as we can, you can see here. Then we have a, 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 a three plus one in which we have the a, a frame, uh, the framework of three neutrino mixing at, at, a, at a small uh, with uh, small masses, and then we have a new uh, heavy neutrino, relatively heavy neutrino at the electron volt scale, which is uh, the nu four. And these two are just distinguished by the so-called by the normal and inverted ordering of the three uh, of the three uh, standard massive neutrinos. And the one plus three is just the inverted one uh, with respect to this, in which the, the new neutrino is uh, lighter than the, than, the, than the three standard neutrinos. Now you can uh, understand, uh, uh, see very clearly that uh, uh, this scheme here is, uh, can be 
uh, seen as a sort of perturbation of the normal uh, trineutrino mixing and also this one because we just add a, a, a new uh, uh, we have the same pattern of the trineutrino mixing and uh, just add the four neutrinos either uh, heavier or lighter one this scheme, this two plus two schema instead are completely different schemes because uh, we have the uh, pattern of the neutrino uh, of the neutrinos is completely uh, um, different from the, the even of the three neutrino mixing is completely different of the uh, of this one and uh, so this is not a perturbation of the three neutrino mixing and uh, uh, and this is a problem because uh, we know that uh, uh, the three neutrino mixing uh, explain very well the uh, observation in the solar uh, in long base and experiments so uh, the the, this means that uh, uh, we will favor uh, and we will consider only these uh, schemes because uh, uh, this scheme will, uh, this scheme of 2 plus 2 will give a, a, a very big effects in the uh, solar and atmospheric neutrinos, which is excluded by the current experimental data. But just for historical reason, I just want to um, uh, mention that. Uh, Actually, when the uh, LSND anomaly that I will discuss in the following was discovered in, in 1995, actually the two plus two schemes were preferred because uh, at the time there were not uh, much, so strong constraint on the mixing of the three neutrino in the three neutrino sector. And, uh, uh, and these two plus two, sc two schemes do not so suffer of what is called the appearance disappearance tension that I will explain uh, uh, later. So at uh, that time, uh, there were several papers which favor this, uh, uh, considered uh, this scheme. But uh, as I said, uh, this is not a perturbation of trineutrino mixing because uh, uh, in these schemes, uh, one predicts large active sterile oscillation for solar and atmospheric neutrinos. And these schemes were uh, excluded when the uh, um, new data uh, appeared and uh, the final exclusion was done in 2004 by this uh, in this paper and uh, now I, I don't uh, explain this because it is not needed so uh, we, I will concentrate uh, on the uh, 3 plus 1 and 1 plus 3 schemes which are per to allow a perturbation of trinotino mixing with uh, uh, a, a 4 by 4 mixing matrix in which uh, the elements, the new elements, uh, which relate the flavor neutrino to the four massive neutrinos are very small. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the same in the three plus one and one plus three. The difference between the two is that uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the three plus one, uh, we have the um, new massive neutrino at the electron volt scale. Instead in the one plus three, we need to have the uh, new massive neutrino very light and the uh, three normal neutrino at uh, the electron volt scale. But uh, this is uh, uh, disfavored by, um, by the uh, measurement or direct measurement of the neutrino masses and in particular by cosmological also measurements. And uh, so this scheme is uh, rather uh, disfavored because uh, there are bounds on the masses of the normal neutrinos, which is uh, 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 smaller than uh, about one electron volt. So also this one plus three scheme now are uh, disfavored and we uh, need to consider only the uh, so-called three plus one schemes, which are, uh, which are uh, uh, attacked here. So let them let me now. Uh, I think as last uh, last uh, uh, thing in this lecture before the questions, I think I will de just derive the uh, oscillation probability in short based and experiments in the three plus one scheme, and then uh, I will uh, conclude the lecture. So uh, now let me derive in detail the uh, oscillation probability, which is uh, rather easy, as as, I, as we will see. So uh, now we consider now the mixing of the uh, active of the flavor neutrino, where alpha now is can, can be e mu tau or also s if it is sterile, and uh, this will be the uh, mixing of uh, four massive neutrinos. So when uh, uh, so this will be the mixing uh, at the source, 
Then we propagate the neutrino from the source to the detector as a function of time. And then uh, each of the massive neutrino will develop its own uh, phase, which is uh, given here. And then uh, the amplitude of the transition between one flavor to another at a certain dist uh, at a, after a certain time will be given by this uh, uh, scalar product here. And uh, it's easy, easy just to derive uh, this, uh, this, uh, this expression. Then uh, the probability is given by the modulo square of, the, of this expression. Now, how we, uh, we will see that we can simplify uh, this expression and ob obtain a, a rather simple expression for the oscillation probability for uh, short baseline experiments. So um, first, uh, let us uh, um, uh, factorize a common phase from out of the sum. And uh, by convention, we can just factorize the phase of the, of the new one. I mean, any phase is the same, but uh, le let us uh, factorize the phase of the new one. This, uh, when we factorize a phase, then uh, uh, this can be eliminated because the modulo square uh, 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 eliminates this phase. Uh, here, there is a mistake because uh, here uh, it should be EK minus E1 as it is here. So I, I need to correct this. So I mean, this phase here should be here. So uh, I mean, the, the phase here disappear and we end up with uh, this expression, which uh, is useful because we have the difference of the, of the energies, which will correspond to the difference of the square of the neutrino masses, which are the, the time squares. So um, uh, you can see here, I have rewritten this expression, so now, we do uh, two things. So we adopt the ultra relativistic approximation uh, and we do two things. So one, first is to, to write time equal distance using the ultra relativistic approximation. And we develop the, the energies uh, uh, using, using the ultra relativistic approximation. And the, uh, when we develop the energies, then we get the, the difference of the, uh, of the uh, of the energies just uh, equal to the, the time square k1 divided by 2p. And p now, uh, as before, we, we call it e because this is the energy or momentum of the neutrino in the limit in which we uh, neglect the neutrino masses. So the oscillation probability uh, acquires this uh, uh, form in which you can see the data, uh, normal daytime square, the distance and the energy. But now we will have all the delta m squares here. So this is a rather complicated expression and it is written here. And this will be rather complicated when we take the, the modulo square. But we can simplify it when we consider short Bayesian experiments. So we can de de derive what is called the effective probability in short Bayesian experiments. And uh, to simplify it, we take into account the fact that, that uh, we are, when we are in the short baseline, so when L is uh, small, then uh, these two phases are uh, very small and that can be neglected because uh, this is uh, the uh, solar daytime square, which is uh, very small. And this is the atmospheric daytime square, which is very small. So they are much smaller than the uh, new short baseline daytime square, which is daytime square for one. So taking into account that these two phases are uh, very small, then the exponential, uh, these two exponential just become one. And uh, we can approximate in short base and experiment the uh, probability in, with uh, this expression. Uh, and now we can uh, use the unitarity of the four by four mixing matrix and express uh, this uh, three, um, the sum of these three uh, first three terms as delta alpha beta minus uh, u uh, star alpha four, u beta four. And this is just a simply unitarity relation of the uh, mixing matrix. And this is useful because you see that uh, this uh, coefficient here is uh, the same as this one. So they can be um, uh, collected together. And uh, we, we, we have the oscillation probability given by this expression here in which I collected this uh, uh, common uh, factor that uh, takes into account of, of the mixing. And then we have this uh, oscillatory uh, term, which depend only on one delta m square, which is the delta m square for one, which is the new delta m square. 
Uh, and then when I take the modulo square, then I, I have the square uh, modulo square of delta alpha beta is delta alpha beta. This is the square modulo square of this uh, term, and this is the, the cross product of the two terms. And here you can see that uh, uh, also uh, this term, when we factorize these two, these two terms are the same. So we can collect them and write a compact form for the uh, oscillation uh, probabilities, which is given here. So you can see that uh, this is uh, a relatively simple uh, form, which can be written also in this way. Uh, and uh, it has uh, uh, the same expression, I mean, the same form as we saw, uh, 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 we have in the case of two neutrino mixing, because uh, uh, in the two neutrino mixing case, we had uh, uh, this uh, uh, oscillation, which were determined by the sine square, uh, the time square L by divided by four E, and then some uh, coefficient, which depended on, on the mixing. Uh, sorry, here I should uh, put a 4 1 here and a 4 1 here. So I forgot to do that. Uh, so uh, we obtain a very simple uh, expression for the effective probability of sh in short Bayesian experiments that I will, uh, and then this I, I will use this expression in the tomorrow to discuss the, the phenomenology. So I think uh, today is better if I stop here and um, uh, as Eligio said, there should be some time for some questions. So please do some questions if, if you have.